some people do intermittent fasting for longevity and these autophagy boosting benefits but let's be honest most of them do it for just losing weight they want to get in shape and improve their body composition and it is definitely true that leaner individuals tend to be healthier and excess body fat doesn't have any useful benefit to a certain extent if you want to lose weight with intermittent fasting then check out this video about how many calories does fasting burn you've got fat weight loss is governed by thermodynamics energy in versus energy out if you consume fewer calories than you burn throughout the day then that will eventually lead to losing your body fat stores calories do matter and you need to be creating an energy deficit in some way Intermittent fasting is just a very convenient way of inducing a negative energy balance. If you confine your daily eating within a certain time frame, then you may tend to just subconsciously start to eat less calories, you become more satiated from less food, and it makes your life that much easier. I would imagine that the vast majority of people aren't even counting their calories, or they're not measuring their macros, but they're still seeing some great results from intermittent fasting, and the reason has to do with the benefits that I just mentioned you subconsciously eat fewer calories and that creates a negative energy balance. Before I tell you how many calories you burn during fasting, I have to differentiate between what it means to burn fat, what's fat oxidation and what's losing fat. Fat oxidation is the process of burning fatty acids in the mitochondria. It refers to which fuel substrates are used in the Krebs cycle to produce ATP. You can have higher levels of fat oxidation due to eating more dietary fat or while you're exercising. But whether or not you'll actually lose fat depends on your daily calorie balance. Losing fat means you're actually losing body fat. You can lose body fat without burning primarily fatty acids during the day. But if you're at a calorie deficit, eventually you will tap into oxidizing the fatty acids stored in your adipose tissue. Burning fat is just a term used to describe fat burning. What it actually means is context dependent and people just use it to either explain what their goals are, how they exercise, or how they feel. It's basically synonymous with both fat oxidation and losing fat, depending on the context. When it comes to exercise, then fat oxidation in the mitochondria occurs in the absence of glucose. High intensity exercise like sprinting and weightlifting exceeds 65% of your VO2 max, which requires glycogen to be used for energy. Lower intensities that stay under 65% like jogging, cardio or easy calisthenics burn primarily fat acids because the intensity is lower. This is fat oxidation but it doesn't necessarily entail losing fat, although it's possible because it burns calories. So basically you can burn a bunch of fat during exercise but not end up losing body fat because you're not at a calorie deficit and at the same time you can still lose body fat without burning fat acids during exercise thanks to being in a calorie deficit what kind of fuel are you using whether that be fat or glucose is just affecting the physiological processes and what kind of fuel is being used but the total body composition and end result is determined by thermodynamics and the balance between energy input and energy output. 48% body fat. The process of burning fat is called lipolysis, during which your body breaks down triglyceride molecules. They're digested and shuttled into the mitochondria to produce ATP. ATP is the energy currency used to carry out virtually every physiological process like breathing, walking, blinking, digesting food and exercising. Fasting does increase the rates of fat oxidation, but it doesn't necessarily make you burn more calories. Calories get burned primarily with energy production and physical activity. A 2014 study by Alan Aragon and Brad Schoenfeld found that body composition changes in people who trained fasted versus fit were the same as long as they were eating the same amount of calories at a deficit. Although the people who were fasting may have shown higher rates of fat oxidation, their overall fat loss was still governed by how many calories they ate. How many calories you burn while fasting or throughout the day is determined by your metabolic rate and total daily energy expenditure or TDE. This number is determined by your basal metabolic rate, BMR, daily physical activity, hormones, medical condition, metabolic status, and what food you eat in what amounts. Generally, people who weigh more have a higher basal metabolic rate. Having more muscle makes you burn more calories at rest because of increased BMR. Therefore, how many calories you burn while fasting is determined by your weight, amount of lean muscle mass, and how physically active you are. So if you want to burn more calories while fasting, then just build more muscle and do resistance training because that promotes muscle growth. At the same time, it's thought that 
intermittent fasting and skipping meals is going to slow down your metabolism and it's going to make it harder for you to lose weight. Is this true? Your TDE might drop because of fasting if you subconsciously reduce your non-exercise activity thermogenesis or NEAT. This includes all the other physical activities that aren't exercise, such as moving around the house, fidgeting, tapping your feet, and general vigor in your movements. If you're restricting calories and dieting, your need tends to drop because you have less energy and you start to compensate for that by naturally lowering your movement. Your body just wants to preserve more energy and you start moving less. If you were to be aware of this, then you can avoid this by just being more active during the daytime. It's not that fasting directly makes you burn less calories, it's just that you start to burn less energy because of moving less and subconsciously compensating for it. Don't move a muscle. To mitigate metabolic adaptation, then you want to be physically active during the daytime and also incorporate resistance training to build muscle because muscle is going to just burn more calories at rest without you needing to exercise for it. Studies show that how often you eat doesn't significantly change how many calories you spend on digestion. Eating six small meals is not going to stoke your metabolism because eating two large meals or one meal will have the same thermic effect of food. The thermic effect of food or how much of the food you ate gets burnt off as calories depends on not the timing but more on the macronutrient ratios of the meal. TEF of protein is 25 to 30 percent for carbs 6 to 8 percent and for fat 2 to 3 percent. So no matter how many meals you have per day you're still gonna end up with the same amount of TEF as long as the macronutrient ratios and the calories were to be matched. If you want to burn more calories on digestion by increasing the thermic effect of food, then you would just have to increase the protein content of your meals. Therefore, how many calories you end up burning during intermittent fasting depends on the foods that you eat during your eating window. Fasting can potentially lead to a lower metabolic rate if it affects the thyroid in a negative way. The thyroid is very sensitive to stress and energy restriction. Whenever the body detects that you're dieting, it tries to compensate for it by lowering your energy expenditure. If fasting causes you too much stress, then it will eventually lower your thyroid and other hormones that regulate energy balance like leptin. Fasting tends to decrease leptin levels, which can lower your energy expenditure. However, there are some studies that show that IF actually increases leptin or doesn't affect it at all. On the flip side, intermittent fasting coupled with adequate nutrient intake seems to make you more leptin sensitive, which means that you'll feel more satiated and experience fewer cravings. Whatever the case is, you just have to know how you individually are going to react to fasting and energy restriction. If you're the kind of person who gets stressed out very easily and tends to overeat, then you just have to pay more attention to how many calories you're eating. Most of the weight loss plateaus people experience happen because of not being aware of how many calories they're actually eating. They're just under-reporting and they think they're actually eating less calories. And also applies to this cycling between eating too many calories and under-eating, so to say. You're dieting the entire week and then you binge on the weekends. You know, the weekly balance of calories still makes you gain weight or it just hits, makes you hit the plateau. So you have to be aware of how many calories you're eating, not on a daily basis, but also on a weekly and monthly basis. Mm -hmm. To lose body fat, then you still need to create an energy deficit. And intermittent fasting is just a very convenient way of creating that. And most people find it somewhat sustainable in terms of not having to counter calories and feeling more satiated from less food. If you want to know how to optimize intermittent fasting, resistance training, sleep and food combining, then check out my metabolic autophagy masterclass. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.